Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join our 12th session of our first ever virtual 55 and Better Expo series. My name is Lindsay Haynes. I am the event manager with Prairie Mountain Media, and I will be today's um, moderator for the session. So for today's panel, we will be hearing from Joseph Poling, the operations manager, and Whitney Osborne, the pharmacy manager from Good Day Pharmacy, discussing the topic of medicine. <clears throat> pharmacy experts Joseph and Whitney will both present a medication boot camp, and that will help all of us kind of better understand how to simplify prescriptions and improve our health with a number of tips and tools. So that being said, because this topic is so relevant to all of us in our everyday lives, I did want to go ahead and point out our question and answer portion um, that's included in this Zoom webinar. So whether you are on a tablet, a computer, or even a mobile device, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, there's both a Q&A session as well as a chat box. So if at any point in time during today's presentation, you come up with any questions that you wanna hear from Joseph or Whitney, go ahead and put those in. And then after they are finished presenting, we will um, jump in and answer all of the questions that you may have. So that being said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Whitney. She's gonna get us started. Hello, and welcome to 55. Oh. Hello, and thank you for coming to 55 and Better, the medication boot camp. My name is Dr. Whitney Osborne, and today, along with Dr. Joseph Poling, we'll be presenting to you about medication adherence and simple tools to help you live healthier lifestyles. I'm a pharmacy manager and a clinical specialist for Good Day Pharmacy, and Dr. Poling is our Good Day Pharmacy operational manager. To start off, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I graduated from Auburn University with my doctorate in pharmacy. I've been working as a pharmacist for a little over eight years now, all in Northern Colorado. And I've been given the chance to learn and see a lot over my career. So, which has given me tons of tools that to help my patients live healthier lives. And hey everyone, uh, as Whitney said, I'm Joseph Poling, the operations manager for Good Day Pharmacy. Good afternoon. I uh, actually born in Colorado, grew up in Loveland, um, graduated from University of Wyoming. So go Pokes. Sorry for all you CSU and CU fans out there. And I've been a pharmacist for eight years. Um, and like I said, currently serving with Good Day Pharmacy. Um, so we're happy that you're, our per that you're participating today. So first we're gonna just dive in into exactly what does a pharmacist do? Now, I get that question all the time, asking me, what do I do in my day-to-day -day practice? So one of our main goals and our main focus is of course to interpret prescriptions, evaluate prescriptions, fill the prescriptions and counsel on those scripts. And also we of course counsel on all over-the-counter medications and that's just part of our day, but I'm gonna go into more detail about each step. So interpret. We receive a prescription from the physician and then we input it into our normally our computer system. Um, we evaluate, so we review the order for the dosing errors, any drug interactions, any possible drug um, adverse events that might happen and also the appropriateness of the order. This is normally the longest step in our daily ordering of a prescription just because we wanna make sure the order is safe and effective for the correct patient. Next is actually filling of the prescription. So this is where we're actually physically filling the script. And this is when we run it through insurance, which we all know that can sometimes be a headache. And then also, this is where we're counting out the prescription and the pharmacist is doing a final check just to verify what is in the bottle is what the patient is supposed to receive. Next, we also do a ton of counseling during the day. We offer counseling on every prescription that we fill. This is our chance to check in with the patient and explain what um, the medications are for, what are possible side effects, what are some drug interactions, and answer any questions that might be lingering with the patient. We're always available to answer any questions that you might have over your prescriptions, over over-the-counter drugs, over anything in your healthcare. 
So next I'm gonna go over some examples of how things can quickly go wrong with filling a prescription. I'm gonna give an example for each step. So interpreting the prescription. Sometimes when a doctor writes a prescription, it's hard to read. Their handwriting might be a little messy, a little quick written. So it's hard for us to distinguish exactly what they want. An example of this is say a physician is writing an order for hydroxyzine, which is for anxiety and also for allergies. It's very easy to misplace that with hydrolyzine, which is something for high blood pressure. Now this can be a huge error for the patient because they could take a medication that would lower their blood pressure when they don't really need it to be lowered, which would result in them getting dizzy and even increasing their risk of falling. So evaluating the prescription. Say we're evaluating a new script for a patient and we're checking back all of the um, side effects and the adverse reactions they might have. And one thing we notice is the allergies. Say we don't have an allergy on file and this patient is allergic to this medication. We dispense the medication, the patient does take the medication and they end up having allergic reaction to it. Now this can be as mild as just maybe a rash, upset stomach, or it can be as severe as breathing problems. So that can be a huge issue for the patient. Filling a prescription. So we normally fill a prescription and the technicians will count out the script and then the pharmacist will verify what's in the bottle is correct. So there has happened at times when a prescription is written for a quantity of 90, but a technician only fills it for a quantity of 30, it's missed at the final check. And then what would happen at that point is that the patient would end up having to come back and get the remaining 60 of the prescription, or they might just totally forget and run out early and then not finish taking their prescription. Counseling. So I've found lots of errors while counseling. One good example is recently I've had a patient come in getting a prescription for an ear infection. And as I'm counseling them, I'm going over how to instill drops into the eye. Well, the patient's looking at me all confused, not quite understanding how an eye drop is gonna help their ear infection. But after going through it and looking at their face and seeing something's wrong, I asked them, why do they seem so confused? They tell me that they're in for an ear infection drop, not an eye infection. I look at the order that was sent over from the physician and I noticed that it was in fact written for an eye drop and not an ear. So I ended up having to call the doctor and verify the infection and making sure that we can get the correct prescription for the correct patient. So now let's go into a little bit about what is medication adherence? Pretty much medication adherence is the degree to which the person's behavior corresponds with the agreed recommendations from a healthcare provider. Pretty much it's saying, are you doing what the prescriber asked you to do? Compliance is the extent to which a patient's behavior matches the prescriber's advice. Pretty much compliance implies the patient obedience to the physician's authority, whereas adherence signifies that the patient and physician collaborate together to make the best option for a patient's medication in health cell. So let's go over tops of non or types of non-adherence. The first one is called primary non-adherence. This is when a provider writes a prescription for the patient, but the medication is never filled or initiated. This is also known as non-fulfillment adherence. This is say you get a prescription from the doctor, you don't know if you really need it, so you just don't ever take it into the pharmacy. The second one is non-persistence. This is when a patient decides to stop taking a medication after starting it without being advised by a health professional to do so. Non-persistence can sometimes happen when patients and providers have a miscommunication about therapeutic plans. So, Say you thought the prescriber told you to stop the medication, but in reality, they never did. They wanted you to continue it. Another um, set of the non persistence is called unintentional non-adherence, which arises from the capacity and resource of limitations that prevent patients from implementing their decisions to follow the treatment recommendations. For example, problems of accessing the prescriptions, say there's a back order on a prescription, so you just have to stop taking it um, for costs, Tons of prescriptions are so expensive nowadays, a lot of people can't afford to take their medications, and also competing demands. Also, sometimes this can involve what's called as individual constraints. So say a patient has a bad inhaler technique and they're not getting the medication fully that they need to into their lungs for their asthma or COPD. 
Another one, and the final one of types of non-adherence is called non-conforming. Non-conforming includes a variety of medications they're not taking as prescribed. So sort of like non-persistence in a way, but more so that the patient decides on their own that they're gonna take their medications differently. So they can decide to skip doses, taking medications at incorrect times, or even to taking more than prescribed. That is what's all going into non-conforming. So let's talk about actually adherence rates. So the rate of adherence is usually reported as the percentage of the prescribed doses of the medication actually taken by the patient over a, a specific time period. For example, a doctor prescribes a medication to a patient. The patient is supposed to take one tablet a day. The prescription is filled for a 30-day supply. At the end of the month, the patient still has 15 tablets left. So that means the 50% adherence rate. So they only took their medication 50% of the time. The extent of non-adherence varies widely. And in different studies, it has been recorded to be as low as 10%, but others as high as 92%. But overall, this, the rate falls around 50% of patients being adherent to medications. Approximately half of that is intentional, while the remainder occurs because the patient is either unaware that they're not taking the medication correctly, or that the regimen is just too complex for the patient to follow it exactly as prescribed. Normally, adherence rates are higher among patients who are taken in acute conditions as compared to those with a chronic condition. For example, a patient is not feeling well and they go to the doctor for a suspected sinus infection. The prescriber writes a prescription for an antibiotic to help prevent the further spread of the sinus infection and also to get better. The patient, knowing that this will make them feel better, immediately goes to the, the pharmacy, gets the prescription filled, and they complete the whole course of treatment to make sure that they get on the right side of the sinus infection. The same patient goes to a doctor and for just a general routine visit, and then they discover during the visit that they have high blood pressure. The physician writes a prescription for a high blood pressure medication, but the patient saying that they don't feel bad, they don't really have any symptoms from the high blood pressure, they choose not to get it filled. They don't think they really need it. So that's the difference between an acute condition where the patient wants to get their medication filled versus a chronic condition when they don't really think like they need it. Pretty much studies reveal about 50% of patients on chronic medications are more likely not to take their medication. So let's talk about some consequences of non-adherence. So pretty much some consequences of non-adherence is waste of medication, disease progression, reduced functional abilities, a lower quality of health, increased use of medical resources, such as nursing homes, hospital visits, and hospital administrations. And many studies have revealed that poor adherence to prescribed regimens can result in serious health consequences. For instance, the risk of hospitalization is more than double in patients with diabetes, high cholesterol, hypertension, or congestive heart failure, who were non adherent to prescribed therapies compared with the general population. Medication non adherence can have a ne negative consequence on not only the patient, but also the healthcare system, so the providers, and even the medical researchers who are looking to establish the value of a medication on the target population. The potential burden of a medication non-inherent outcomes on healthcare delivery makes an important public health concern. Helping people take their medication appropriately would be a better achievement to avoid higher risks of severe relapses, antibiotic resistance, and preventable hospitalizations. So let's go over some simple reminders and tools to help you take your medications as prescribed. Some very simple ones are to leave your medication someplace, easy to remember to take it every day. For example, on your nightstand, when you get up in the morning, you see it. When you're going to bed, you'll see it sitting right there. Right next to your coffee maker, this is another great example. I know most of us need caffeine in the morning to get going, and that's a great place to see it every morning and go ahead and take your medication before getting your coffee. 
one place to not keep your medications is in your bathroom. It's best to keep it out of a high moisture area. So it's best to keep it away from your shower, away from your bathtub and outside of that bathroom. Another very easy way to remember to take your medication is to set a quick alarm on your phone. Say you take a medication every day at noon, go ahead, put a quick alarm in your phone, it's title it medication, it goes off every day at noon. It's easy to remember to take it. Some other ways to help your mind to take medications is there's tons of phone applications out there nowadays to help with you. Some of the top three I've seen are the MediSafe application, which helps you manage your medications with reminders, allows you to be notified when your prescriptions are running low, and also you can help share your medication regimen with family members so they can see if you ever miss a dose. So it's sort of nice if someone else is helping you out with your medication, it gives them a notification to give you a call and remind you to take your medication. Another one is Mango Health. Mango Health is one that actually incorporates even your health cell, healthy lifestyle choices. So like food and exercise. This can help track the overall health through this app. You can create a schedule of healthy habits to track and the, op, the app also sends reminders to take your medication to increase your healthy habits. Another one that's very similar, but very popular is called My Therapy Medication Reminder and Pill Tracker. So it's pretty much an aid to help you stay in control of your health. The app includes customized pill reminders, measurement tracking, and health and exercise alerts. So next, we're just gonna go over some mechanical medication ways. So the easiest way to organize your medications is to just go to the pharmacy and get a little pill box. You just arrange it by day, what pill needs to be taken what day, and even you can arrange it by time. That's the easiest way, but also can be a little confusing and time consuming. Another thing that's new is called the Med Minder, which you can see a picture on the screen. This is like an electronic way to organize your medication it will send you alerts on your phone and even to your family members to have you take your medications. You're also able to put pictures on it and also make it a little interesting. You has the weather on there just to pull you in some more questions. The last one is just a very simple, it's called the e-pill once a day reminder. Pretty much it is just a little uh, magnet that you put onto surfaces and you can mark it that you took your medication at what time and what day. So you take your medication, you go and change the date to that date, and then you know you're done for the day. So then you don't have to try to remember if you took it or not. So next we're gonna go into ways that Good Day Pharmacy is helping with medication adherence and Dr. Poling is gonna take over. Excellent, yes, thank you, Whitney. And I hope this is okay. So as Lindsay mentioned at the top of the call, uh, Feel free to throw out questions to us. I know we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the, the call here, which hopefully we have plenty of time for. I think we will. Um, it looks like somebody had sent a question in the chat box. Do you recommend daily vitamins for persons over 65? Um, and I'll chime in, Whitney, you can add. Absolutely, as we age, we... Um, we need nutrients and we need elements. And uh, if you dig into the research, a lot of our foods, you know, including fruits and vegetables are actually becoming depleted of those key ingredients, um, you know, vitamins and minerals. And so it's becoming more and more important um, over the years to take supplements. And you can, you know, speak with your pharmacist uh, about recommendations on um, anything that you might be deficient in and certainly your provider as well. Um, there's there's a clear uh, difference in the quality of supplements and vitamins. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I don't know if you have anything to chime in, Whitney. No, for sure, yes. As you get older, your body sometimes can also take in amount as you did when you were younger from your food. And so it's always great to have supplements. Lots of calcium, vitamin D is great for the bones. Of course, vitamin B, vitamin C nowadays with the COVID and flu and everything going around. I think a multivitamin is great, especially if you go for one that's 65 and older. Great. And then there was a, a second question. Is zinc a daily recommended is zinc a daily recommendation for older folks? I've heard it helps reduce the symptoms of COVID or flu. Um, zinc is well known to uh, help with immune support and boost immune function. So 
yes, definitely something that we recommend. Um, not sure about the evidence uh, with, you know, impacting COVID or reducing risk of COVID. It's certainly not going to harm you, um, but for sure flu, you know, just zinc is a good thing to take if you're wanting to boost your immune system. And there's products, you know, you can do nasal swabs that have zinc as a component. So that actually could trap some of those bugs. You know, as we know, a lot of bugs come in through the respiratory system. So our mouth and nose. And so one way to, to prevent infection. Whitney, anything to add? No, agreed. I mean, I don't think it's really dependent of being like 65 and older or even over 55 having to take zinc. I think it's pretty good for everyone to have a little bit of zinc in their daily multivitamin or even just in addition to it, especially during the huge COVID flu season that we're experiencing right now. Um, and of course, it won't be harmful. You can't take too much zinc, but if you keep it at just one a day of the daily tablet or what's recommended on the over-the-counter item that you get, you'll be getting plenty of zinc and you won't have to worry about it. Awesome. All right. So yes, thank you so much for that information, Whitney. I'm going to continue the, the rest of the, the conversation here. Um, so what is Good Day Pharmacy doing or what are other pharmacies doing to help with the huge issue of non-adherence, you know, increased medication costs, side effects, um, challenges getting into the pharmacy, things like that. So um, one thing that we firmly believe at Good Day Pharmacy, which is our mission statement, is we believe that the best form of healthcare is delivered locally and based on relationships. So the key word there, key words are relationships and local. Um, if you have a relationship with your pharmacist and healthcare team, you know, including everybody from your providers, the nurses, physical therapy, um, you know, patient, uh, individuals that come to your home, perhaps having that relationship um, helps to uh, identify ways to address non-adherence. Um, so what we try to do is we build those relationships with patients coming in. If, if I know your name, if, you, if you're coming into one of our pharmacies and I know who you are, it's going to be easier for us to have a conversation and for, it's going to be easier for you to approach me or one of our pharmacy team members and ask questions, right? If it's somebody that you've never interacted with before, whether it be in person or on the phone, it's, it's a lot harder or more difficult to have those meaningful conversations and meaningful interactions. Um, so we, we truly do believe that, that, you know, we, we try to, to build those relationships and keep things local, you know, working with your provider, you know, your local provider. Um, so, you know, as, as Whitney mentioned, education, while helpful, it's typically not enough to, to, you know, comply or follow the provider's orders. So we have some, uh, some tools and systems and strategies to help you. So, um, pay attention, listen in, and these were these are going to be things that I would highly recommend that you investigate or ask ask your pharmacy or pharmacist about. Um, so the biggest uh, the biggest thing that we've done at specifically Good Day Pharmacy and, and other pharmacies have done this to some degree is a process called medication synchronization or MedSync for short. Um, so what MedSync is is it allows you to pick up all of your ongoing prescription refills at the pharmacy on a single convenient day each month or you know every three months if you're doing 90 day supplies. Um, it allows you to work closely with your pharmacist and pharmacy team to stick to your medication regimen, which is you know your, your full list of medicine. Um, the process, we love it so much because it's a win, win, win. It's a win for you as the patient, it's a win for us as the pharmacy and it's a win for your provider. So what does it mean for you? Why, how is this a win for you? Um, it offers you a routine. Um, you have way more important things to be doing in life. Uh, when it, you know, you, you don't want to be coming into the pharmacy every week or multiple times a week to pick up your prescriptions. You know, you can certainly hang out with us. We, we love to see you and we love you coming in, but we know there's a lot more important things in life than coming into the pharmacy. So having the routine and that flexibility to enjoy life, you know, um, you don't have to worry about squeezing in extra trips throughout the week. Um, you won't be barraged with reminders, you know, hey, we have medications ready for you. Pick up reminders. Hey, do we need to return this to stock? Why aren't you coming in? Um, so knowing that your MedSync pickup day is approaching actually helps encourage you to continue taking your medicine as prescribed. Um, what does this allow for us? 
So by streamlining all of your prescriptions to one date, it actually allows us to contact your provider typically like five to seven days ahead of time to get refills. You know, if you're out of refills, we do that for you. Um, it allows us to order in medication. So there's, as you know, medicine can be costly and we try to order that medicine um, in time so that way you don't run out, but we also don't want it sitting on our shelves for six months kind of thing. So if we know when your refills are coming, we can order that medicine in five to seven days ahead of time, plenty of time before you're gonna run out. And also many of you um, have uh, specific requests when it comes to specific manufacturers. So for, some, you know, for whatever reason, certain inactive ingredients may or may not uh, in, interact with you differently. You know, maybe, maybe the green tablets give you an upset stomach. Um, so we, what we do a lot is we order specific manufacturers in for patients when, when they're available and when it's covered by the insurance. Sometimes they're not available. Sometimes they're not covered by the insurance. Um, so by knowing your medicine date, we can order that stuff in ahead of time. That way you're not running out and calling in a refill you know, on a Friday and we're out of stock. Now you got to go through the weekend or, you know, we try and track it down at another pharmacy kind of thing. Um, the biggest reason that we love MedSync is it streamlines our workflow. So it actually gives our pharmacy teams more time to engage with you as the patient and as the customer. So we have more time to have conversations about your medicine, about side effects, you know, just about how you're doing in life, right? Uh, healthcare isn't just about taking medicine. It's about you as an individual, one size does not fit all, right? So we have to um, be specific to what your needs are. Um, so some of those other care services, you know, could be immunizations, it could be a Medicare open enrollment plan comparison, could be blood pressure checks, um, all, all of which, you know, are, are free. Um, education, counseling, we want to make sure you're empowered and you have the right information to make the best decisions for your health. Um, and then why is this a, uh, a win for specifically a pharmacist? It allows the pharmacist more time to look at your entire profile. Yes, we do that when we're filling refills. Um, however, when we see your entire medication basket together, it's just a lot easier to identify if there's drug duplications, we can make sure you're on the, the correct strength. You know, doctors will change you know, you from a 10 milligram to a 20 milligram. And if a 10 milligram is accidentally called in as a refill, we might fill that and not, not see a 20 milligram dose, you know, that was just called in the next day kind of thing. So we can look at your entire profile, make sure you're on the most up-to-date medicine, the right strengths, the right dosages, you know, identify, wow, this, you know, this patient is on 10 medicines. It looks like there are a couple medications that are you know, twice a day or three times a day or four times a day, I, I bet we could simplify this for the patient and get them on an extended release and help them from taking two or three tablets a day to one tablet a day, um, things like that. So providers love it. Um, the ones that are familiar with it, um, because we all know providers are crazy busy. Um, they have a huge queue of pending refill requests and notes from pharmacies to clarify orders and confirm, you know, prescription orders that have been sent to us because they're so busy. If we can save them time and make their lives easier, that gives them more time with you at your next appointment. So rather than send, you know, refill requests 10 different times throughout the month, let's send it one time, all of them together to that doctor. And they too can look at your entire profile all at once, make the best decision, and then move on to the next task that they have. Um, oops. Interesting fact is uh, according to a report prepared by the NCPA, which is the National Community Pharmacists Association, um, patients that are on MedSync are two and a half times more likely to be adherent to their medications and they're 21% less likely to discontinue drug therapy. So numbers don't lie, it's, it's a really good thing to be on MedSync. Um, something else, delivery. If you are not aware of delivery, certainly explore it. You know, talk to your pharmacy. Certainly if you fill with us at Good Day Pharmacy, e you know, easy to become a patient that has medications delivered. Some, some pretty obvious uh, benefits, you know, you're 
it's convenient, right? We don't have, you don't have to come into the pharmacy. We can deliver it to you. We can deliver it to your place of work. We can deliver it to somewhere else. It's just more convenient. Um, avoid, you know, you're going to avoid missing doses. If you can't make it into the pharmacy that day, your schedule's crazy busy, give us a call. Let's, let's shoot that out to you and let's get that delivered. And then of course, in this season with COVID, let's avoid that unnecessary exposure, um, you know, to COVID. If we all know that there's sick people that are coming into pharmacies and healthcare clinics. And so if you want to avoid exposure to them, let us bring those prescriptions to you. It's contactless. You know, you can stay, stay in your home. We can leave it in a secure spot, coordinate that with you. Um, and you know, you want to prevent further illness, right? Keep yourself healthy, stay at home if you can. And then of course, after surgery, you know, we want to promote easier healing. So after a procedure, after a surgery, if you've been in the hospital, go home and recover and feel better. And really it's not worth the pain to, to come into the, the pharmacy to get your medicine. Let us bring those to you. Um, it's the best way to ensure that you're going to heal, um, you know, as you need to. Something that, uh, that I've become very excited about recently is uh, we're, gonna, we're calling them good day packs. And we're certainly not the only pharmacy that does this. Um, what we are doing is it's kind of MedSync on steroids. So not only are you getting all of your prescriptions at the same time each month, but you're actually getting your medications hand uh, blistered into little pouches to the specific time of day that you take that medicine. So for those that can see my screen, you can see a couple examples of what a pouch looks like. It's got your name on it. It's got the day, day of the week, the date, so month and day of the month, and then time. So if you take four medicines in the morning, you're going to have four medicines in a pouch that says, you know, 8 a.m. Tuesday morning kind of thing. Um, it's got the list of your medicine along with the strength, who your prescriber is, and then the color and shape of that tablet. So super easy. It's, uh, they're sealed. The labels are clearly identified, very easy to open. Um, it's ideal for travel. Um, so I know not many people are traveling in this season, but you know, if you're on a lot of medicine and gosh, I don't want to take all these vials with me. I don't want to lose them, forget them. It's just inconvenient packing them. You know, if you're going to be gone for a weekend, you know, a week, take a week of these strips out and man, you'll be impressed with how much space you're going to save and how, how much easier and convenient this is going to be. Um, so again, this is a free service, but doing again, kind of going back to the, the main point of the start of my chat is you, these are things that you should be doing or asking your pharmacist about that's going to save you time, help you take your medicine as prescribed. And again, give the pharmacy and your providers more time to build that relationship with you and make sure what you're taking is appropriate. So what, what is uh, grouped with these day packs are, it's a medication administration record. And so this is um, very nice for your loved ones, for caregivers to bring into your doctor's office for yourself. It's again, got, all of your information on it, along with every medicine that the pharmacy is filling for you, including over-the-counter supplements. Um, it's got what the medicine is, the strength, the directions, along with what the medication looks like. So there's a lot of medicine that's a white round tablet. And we have patients that call us and say, I'm not, you know, I accidentally mixed up my vials. They're all white and they're all round and I'm not sure what to do. So if you have delivery, our delivery driver can help, you know, they can help with that. They can call us and read what's on those tablets because they're very small. It's hard to read the, the letters and numbers on there. But this is a nice report that, um, you know, you can bring into your next doctor's visit kind of thing to, again, make sure everyone has the most updated list of what you're taking. So that way the best decision for you can be made. So other areas beyond, other opportunities beyond dispensing, of course, many of you probably get vaccinated in a pharmacy. It's very convenient, no appointment necessary. 
Um, there's bioidentical hormone replacement therapy consultation. So similarly to supplements and vitamins, as we age, we produce less hormone. Um, so uh, taking hormone that is identical to the hormone that our own bodies are producing helps. It's, ac it's actually also known as anti-aging. Um, so we offer that that can help you with your, you know, giving you the optimal health that you want and deserve. Um, certainly opioid counseling. Um, we know it's an epidemic in the country. Um, th specifically this period, Medica Medicare open enrollment plan comparisons. That is crazy confusing and something, you know, 70 to 80 percent of patients on Medicare plans are on, are not on the least expensive are not on the least expensive option. So we can easily share with you plans that would be less costly. Again, it all relates back to adherence. If you're on medicine that is too costly, man, it's gonna be hard to be motivated to keep taking that medicine and, and keep picking it up. So if we can save you money on copays, if we can identify manufacturer coupons that are gonna drop that copay way down, at, let us do that, you know, we're here for you. Um, tobacco cessation counseling, you know, that certainly affects how medications work. And again, if we have that relationship with you and we know, oh yeah, I know Mrs. Smith smokes. She's been talking about quitting, man, I'm, I'm going to encourage her the next time she comes in, I'm going to kind of let her know how that may influence how her medications are working. Um, you know, blood pressure measuring counseling, we can do that in the pharmacy as well. So much more. So again, ask and if you know demand that we be better demand you know there's nobody that's going to fight for your health better than you and so we would love to to collaborate with you and make sure that you're getting the best health care that you deserve um, if there's other services that that we can be doing that other pharmacies can be doing please ask we're so accessible we're the we're the most accessible health care provider in the country um, no appointment necessary every other health care uh, clinic, you have to see the front desk, got to schedule an appointment, um, which is appropriate. There's a reason for that. Um, right now, it's convenient. You just walk in and you just talk with us. And that is all we have. I think we're just a few minutes shy before the question and answer session. So we're happy to answer any questions at this point. Great. Thank you so much to both of you. Um, so the first couple questions that we had submitted are a little bit more specific to um, some current situations that some people have find themselves are finding themselves in. So Whitney, if you know or have any insight, um, that'd be great. But if not, just let us know. <clears throat> so the first one that came in, um, she takes a thyroid uh, medication for hypothyroidism. So the instructions that she's given with the medication is don't eat anything for an hour after you take your first, you know, you take your dose for the day. So does that include like coffee and, you know, like dairy products that would be inserted in the coffee? And then even the water is okay. Um, does lemon water change that? Is that something you'd have to stay away from? Yeah, so what they do recommend is about 30 minutes to an hour before eating or drinking anything that you take your thyroid medication. So water is fine, lemon water, that's okay too. But if you're having a coffee with a lot of creamer in it, I would wait at least 30 minutes before trying to have that cup of coffee. So maybe right when you get up, take it first thing, then go brush your teeth, wash your face, get dressed, and then go downstairs and have a relaxing cup of coffee. Okay, great. Um, uh, and then, so this next one's more about kind of antibiotics. And so since they're a little bit more, um, you know, intense, I guess you could say, um, so this person, you know, in the past they've taken an antibiotic and their side effects were so terrible. And so their doctor prescribed them something different, but, um, they were able to take enough of the first medication for the antibiotics that, um, they were able to just stop completely. So their question following up from that is, well, does that one example kind of create a resistance to antibiotics or does having side effects mean that you've formed some kind of resistance? So normally a side effect doesn't say that you have a resistance to that antibiotic. It's just your body responding to it. So most people will have like upset stomach, 
or they might even have like, you know, a little bit of headache, but that is a normal side effect. If you've taken the medication enough to get rid of the infection in your body and you stop it, that's okay. That won't start resistance. But what I'd recommend is the next time you go into the physician, remind them of that interaction you had, and then try to switch it to a different antibiotic so that your body won't keep doing the same thing while it's having that same reaction. And then that could lead to resistance down the road. Okay, great. Um, so expired medications, are they safe to take? So the manufacturer recommends and what the FDA says is once it's expired, it's not likely going to be harmful, but it's not going to be as effective. So mm -hmm. they do recommend getting a new prescription that is in date. And then just so you know, at Good Day Pharmacy at our Loveland location, we do have a drop, a drop box that you can come in and bring all expired medications and we get rid of them for you. Okay, great. That was going to be kind of my next question for you is, you know, what is the best way to dispose of old medications? Um, so, of course, that being number one, but is it safe to throw them away? Is it safe to, you know, dump them in the drain? I know a lot of people kind of deal with that. So, <laughs> So they say, don't put it down the drain. So don't put it down your sink or in the toilet. But what you can do is you can destroy the medication, sort of like mixing it with water in some kind of container. And then if you pour it into coffee grounds or in kitty litter, no one can get that out of that. So it sort of mm -hmm. absorbs the absorption and then it's okay to save and throw it away in your, in your trash. Okay, great. Um, so this next question, you know, either for Joseph or Whitney, either one. So what are some main differences between brand name medications versus generic medications. I know you kind of discussed that sometimes, you know, medications can be so costly. And so what's the best way to know when generic medications are okay to request and when, you know, just kind of a couple questions like that come up with the difference between the two. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in and Whitney can add. So for sure the, an obvious difference is the price brand name medications are a lot more expensive in pharmaceutical companies. They have patents on their, their treasured products. And so they want to make sure they're recouping all their research and development. Um, once a brand name becomes a generic, there's a time period when the price is slowly uh, decreases. Um, you know, if, if multiple companies can produce a generic, the price shoots down very quickly. If only one company does the gener generic, um, it usually takes about six months for that price to come down. Um, and pharmacists, you know, the pharmacy technicians, they can help uh, any patients with knowing when medications may become generic. Um, as far as the therapeutic effectiveness, um, really generics, the FDA, they go through a very uh, in-depth process to be approved. The inactive ingredients are different, but the active medication is the same and it has to be within a very specific window of uh, active ingredient, um, you know, nearly identical to the brand name medication. So of course the generics are gonna look different. They're gonna be a different size, shape, color. Um, we have most of our patients on generics and they do wonderfully. Um, and also a lot of times the insurance may dictate whether a brand name or a generic medication can be used. So mm -hmm. if, you want to, if you want to be on a brand name medication, it's possible and it's probably likely that the insurance does not want to pay for that because it's so costly. So they may force you to be on a generic and there's, there's ways to work with your provider and pharmacist to, to stay on that brand. Um, but for the most part, our patients do wonderfully on generics. Whitney, okay. anything to add? <laughs> No, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, it has to be the same exact active ingredients, like Joseph said, just the inactive fillers can be different. So that's what some people might say, patients, it didn't work as well or something, but it's more so their body reacting to that inactive ingredient. It's not the actual medication that's in it. Okay. <laughs> um, great. So some medications, you know, they list side effects and, you know, of course, some people sometimes can experience them right away. So if you find that um, you're experiencing side effects with, with a certain medication, can you ever hope that they go away? Do they go away? Or is it more just, okay, I should maybe decide to kind of um, ask my provider for something different? Yeah, they, so again, Whitney can chime in. She's, uh, I would say Whitney's a lot smarter than I am. Um, 
<laughs> so side effects, certainly there's, you know, the, the common side effects and then the uncommon side effects, which is, you know, less than 1%, meaning one out of every 100 patients might experience this. And bef so one thing to keep in mind with, you know, that list of side effects that I've, mm -hmm. it's always stuck with me is when a pharmaceutical company is doing a drug study and they have participants taking that medicine, they have to report literally everything that happens to those individuals taking that medicine. So if I'm in a drug study and I take, you know, tablet A and I drive, I'm driving home and I get in a car accident and I break my arm, broken bones could be a side effect because they don't know if the medicine weakened my bones um, so that's why there's always a huge, huge list. And of oh, course, yeah. over time they have, you know, what's common and what's truly, you know, associated with that medicine. Mm -hmm. um, but many medicines, you know, especially like the upset stomach, most things we take orally, um, our, our body wants to get rid of. And so that's why that upset stomach, you know, maybe a little nausea, vomiting can happen, but a lot of things go away. Um, there's certain side effects that don't go away. And those are, you know, things that you want to make sure you're aware of, you know, talking to your provider, talking to your pharmacist to make sure you're aware before you start, because you don't want to have the wrong expectations going into taking a medicine. Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay, great. Um, so this, a couple, I had a couple questions that might relate more to Good Day Pharmacy um, in specifics, but um, I know you mentioned the delivery, but can you have medication mailed to you? Yes. <laughs> yep. the okay. The answer is yes. Yeah. And yeah. We have patients that do that. And we have patients that, you know, snowbird down in Arizona and Florida. And we're, we're certainly licensed in uh, a few different states in our region um, to mail consistently to. Mm -hmm. And it's, I recently learned that it's actually okay to mail, you know, to a patient down in Arizona if it's kind of a seasonal thing. Um, but yeah, for sure, mail. It, we would just still recommend that you engage with with us or, you know, the pharmacist or pharmacy team. That way we're not mailing you something you don't need. Right. Okay. And is there anything that you have to kind of like, um, go in online or give you guys a call if we did receive it, you know, is there a way to track kind of if somebody did receive it or didn't as far as just kind of like the safety goes? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Certainly different shipping carriers have tracking so we can track medicine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some patients want overnight medicine. We've done that. Whitney, I, at her pharmacy, they certainly do a, a lot of shipping and yes. coordinating with patients. It's, it's really helped a lot of folks in this COVID season. Right. Um, yeah, so there's, there's ways to do it. Certainly there's medication that would be a lot harder to ship, you know, insulins and things that, res that require, require refrigeration or yeah, something. Refrigeration, things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's the winters, there's the summers. And so again, it's just using our judgment. Like if we can get that medicine to a patient in the hands of one of our delivery drivers, we're going to do that because mm -hmm. we know it reached that patient. Great. Anyway. And then kind of a follow-up to that one as well. Um, can you request a family member to pick up a prescription from the pharmacy? Yes, you can. Um, so one way you can always call us, let us know if someone's going to come by and pick it up specifically, mm -hmm. but we make sure what we check is name and date of birth and everything in their file before then we just hand out a prescription. Okay, great. So you do have to know um, some of yeah. the information. You can't just say, I need my prescription for exactly. so-and-so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and then as well, kind of just um, tying in another question with just the operations of a pharmacy. So you do have a reshelf schedule. So if you don't pick up your prescription in a certain timeline, I know that they get reshelved and you have to refill the prescription. So for example, if I, you know, I took too long to go pick it up and it's only going to be, you know, on the shelf for one more day, but I can't make it in. Do I have the authority to call in and say, can you hold it for me? Or do I, do you have to kind of follow that reshelving schedule? 
Go ahead, Whitney. Okay. I was going to say, so with um, some insurances, it is a hard line. Like we have a set time we have to follow. Mm -hmm. Other insurances, or say if you're just paying cash pay or discounted pay, normally we can keep that ready for you. So we just ask that you would give us a phone call and say, mm -hmm. like you just said, hey, I'm going to be in in a couple of days. Can I please pick it up then? And then we put a note on the prescription, please do not return. Patient will pick up by this date. And of course, if it goes past that date, we might return it. But that means we can always refill it again. And it normally takes us like 10, 15 minutes to get it done for you. So okay. really, it's not a huge thing that we have to go mm -hmm. through a whole big process. Uh, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Would I have to like call my doctor to get it refilled again? Or is it just something you guys can do? Normally it's something we can do. Of course, okay. there are stipulations with certain medications. Say it expired while it was sitting on the shelf or something like that. But most of the times we can just get it ready right away. Okay, great. <laughs> Yeah. And um, so, a, oh, a sorry. Quick, a quick comment. No, just, I think a, another tip would be to just start with the pharmacy. You know, when it comes to medicine, just start with the pharmacy versus calling your provider. Um, we can probably troubleshoot and answer, you know, 90% plus of any challenges or issues, you know, even if a prescription's expired and it's not a controlled medicine, you know, we can do loaners because we certainly don't want anyone running out of their medicine over the weekend, things like right. that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, vacation overrides, just, yeah, start with the pharmacy. And if we can't answer, we'll, you know, we would say, hey, let's get in touch with the doctor and, you know, proceed accordingly. And that's great to know. I know a lot of times, you know, you guys probably have way better communication or a better chance of communication with mm -hmm. providers and doctors than, you know, us calling and having to go leave a message with the front desk and then kind of wait for that chain of command to happen. So that's great to know. <laughs> so we did have another question um, uh, that's a little bit more specifics um, to their past experiences. So I'll do my best Whitney and Joseph to make sure it makes sense. So um, I'm so sorry if I mispronounce this word. This says, I know statins can be effective for cholesterol However, one of the side effects can hinder kidney, memory, or Alzheimer's. So if one has tendency for familial dementia and high cholesterol, how does one choose the best course of action? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, well, for sure, talking to the provider, there are different statins that cause less likely to have the dementia and Alzheimer's side effect. Um, they're really coming out with studies with that right now and really proving that some do have more effects of causing Alzheimer's or dementia and then less with the other medications. So talking to the provider, make sure they know all family history, of course, and you can always come and talk to the pharmacist and give concerns and we can look into that for you. But a lot of patients really, they can start a statin and then they would know if they'd have any difference within a couple months, if not even a couple of weeks of being on the statin. And they're not the same for every statin. So they might take one and then they stop it and start another one and won't have that problem at all with memory problems or even there's muscle pains and weaknesses. And that's a big part of statins as well. But different medications in the same class of medication won't affect the patient the same way. Great. I'm glad that I was able to have that make sense for you guys. So, <laughs> um, so if you miss a dose of any kind of medication, and I know this is a very broad example, but if you ever were to miss a dose, what's the best plan of action moving forward? I mean, do you take it when you remember, or is it okay to skip and continue with your um, routine, I guess? Yeah, I'll let Whitney answer that one as well. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to, but I, again, Whitney's just so smart, so she should. Oh, yeah. So smart. So, um, pretty much, I would say first thing is call your pharmacist and just ask. Say, hey, I missed this dose. It was supposed to be at 8 a.m. It's now 1 p.m. My next dose was at, is at 5. What, what should I do? Should I go ahead and take it or should I just wait? And we'll tell you if what medication, if you should wait or if you should go ahead and take it. Some medications, no problem. Take it when you remember it. Others, you want to make sure you have at least a certain amount of time between doses. Oh, and uh -huh. so you would just skip that dose and just continue on with the next. Okay, great. So the best plan of action is to really just call your pharmacy. <laughs> yeah, for, for all your questions, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you request more information um, when you're purchasing or picking up your medication? Um, can you request more information other than what's written on the bottle, for example? 
Of course, yes. We have patient education handouts that we can give to um, patients whenever they request on any medication. We can also find the drug information and the drug resources that they send out with the actual medication, mm -hmm. and we can give that to the patient. And we also have other resources online that we can print off tons of information for them. Okay, great. And is there ever a time, you know, and maybe this is a question for Good Day Pharmacy specifically, but is there ever a time where a pharmacist isn't available um, and it's just, you know, like the, the employees there um, as, as far as like, if you need to ask questions or anything about medications or. Yeah, when, whenever a pharmacist, that's a good question. Whenever a pharmacy is open, a pharmacist has to be on site. Okay. So for us, you know, pharmacist is always on site. I know for some of the chains, you know, you can certainly be in the grocery store, but the pharmacy is closed. So mm -hmm. if there's people walking around near the medicine. That means there's a pharmacist there as well. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, I just want to make sure I received everybody's questions here and didn't skip over anyone. Great. Yeah, I think that's all the questions I had. And that's all the questions that came in from the audience as well. So I just wanted to say again, thank you so much to both Joseph and Whitney for being here. Um, it's definitely a confusing topic and one that, you know, can get a little overwhelming and overbearing. So um, the tips and the tricks that you guys had today, I think are very beneficial to know. And um, I think are just great for anybody of any age too, even myself going to the pharmacy as well. So Thank you so much. Um, we are actually recording this webinar. So if you know of anybody who might benefit from this information um, that you would like to see it, or if you would like to see it again um, and check back, it is gonna be available on our website. So that specific um, URL can be found at www.northerncolorado55better Dot com. And so there as well, we'll have more information um, from Good Day Pharmacy. We'll have resources and contact info. So if there's any questions that you um, think of later that you might have missed or anything like that, we'll have the opportunity to get that to these speakers. And then you can find out a little bit more about Good Day Pharmacy as well. So thank you so much. Um, it's been great. And otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow. Same channel, same time. Great. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm.